Hi. I am ASMR Awesome. And this is your chance to self hypnotize yourself. Yourself to sleep and solve real world problems in your life. Before you go to sleep, during your sleep, and especially after your sleep the next day. That sounds magical, right? You want to first be able to ascertain, to figure out what issues are going on in your life and to hopefully be able to prioritize which one you want to address first. And I'll guide you through how to deal with the issue based on the details of it. We're not going to get too detailed because you can't really communicate back to me, but it'll be quite easy and fortuitous, uh, especially if you practice this these sort of states of lucidity, awareness, if you will. If you've ever had a lucid dream, uh, most people have them accidentally when they wake up in the morning when they're like half awake and they go back to bed, they go back to sleep. They oftentimes enter back into the same dream and are suddenly able to control it somewhat because the fact that you almost woke up gives you the ability to know the difference all of a sudden between the real world and the dream world and then your mind is able to start messing with the dream world. So we're gonna do this while you're awake and it will easily spill into your sleep meaning that you will think on the topic that you uh, concentrate on which is a sort of meditation and certainly uh, self-hypnosis. At this point, it's, it's guided meditation slash, slash hypnosis, because I'll be guiding you. We'll see how it goes. Okay, I want to wanna start by saying that as a, a new ASMR artist, I've seen quite a few of the videos over the last few months and I'm basing this off of the ones that I found most useful to myself. And those were ones with some uh, rhythmic tapping. I found uh, an item I like to tap with and it'll help ease you into a very relaxing state of lucidity and usefulness. And also I'm going to, uh, I might whisper a little bit, I'm gonna keep softly because it's much more relaxing than me shouting at you. That won't happen. Um, so to start, to start your self-hypnosis, you'll want to really start thinking pragmatically in a problem-solving way about your own life. And think about some issues that have been bothering you lately and make sure to be realistic with them. That is, that is of the utmost. Uh, we can't change, for instance, anyone else. Um, not directly. And you can't control how, how they do change if they do. So the point is to focus on yourself and change your own perspective which can change your actions, but this isn't me messing with you in any way. You'll change based completely off of how what, what you think is best. And me having done this uh, quite a number of times to myself over uh, almost the last year, maybe even more, come to think of it, been kind of doing this a long time, I've been getting very favorable results um, in 
small yet significant changes to my life and my actions and of course the core of it, my perspective, has gotten um, more open-minded, healthier, and I realize, for instance, when I think I have an issue with a person, oftentimes it's a matter of their fear about something or my fear about something, which could be completely based on something real or completely unreal. And that's really the core of any issue you want to pay attention to, to try and solve it. To get to the core of the problem instead of trying to shake the person out of something, which basically doesn't work. Um, you can't change people, and you can't force new things on them. I found through my experience that the best way um, to really bring a perspective to someone's attention is to live it, is, is to change that perspective in yourself, and your actions will very much show your change in perspective, and people do catch on generally speaking. I mean, it's completely possible they won't catch on at all, but um, that's just something you'll have to take into account and be understanding of as well. Life is all about patience. A lot of patience that you don't necessarily want to exercise, but you got to, you got to, to keep happy. So, I'm going to start some tapping here as I bring you further into the, um, the explanation of what's really going on here. Okay. So, the issue that you have in mind, first of all, let's make sure it's... First of all, no issue is too large. We can step by step it as much as you want. Any night or all nights that you want to go to sleep, any time that you have energy to do this, you can further chip away at the problems in your life and get to the core, to a good solution. So let's try and just with your, in your mind, go through some issues that have been going on in your life and think about possibly what would be most helpful to have change tomorrow, to have a better situation about it tomorrow. What would you most like to fix first? Which of these issues? And when you've dwindled it down to that, it's important to further segment the ways you want to address it. In which way would you like to change your perspective first? If the issue is revolving around an interaction between interactions between you and another specific person or persons, you'll have to critically keep in mind their state of mind, their state of uh, how their life's going, and you don't need to know everything about them, but if you can get closer to by what they've told you, of course. You don't want to meddle in their lives. To finding out maybe what is causing this sort of unfavorable interactions with you. Is it related to any fears lately or unfortunate circumstances? 
that have been happening to them. And it, these circumstances could be in or outside of their control. But it's important to realize that when people do uh, judge others, it's, it's quite common that they've judged themselves beforehand in a very similar manner, only harder. So you basically have to understand that they're being hard on themselves. And you want to bring an understanding perspective to their life so that they can more quickly understand and accept themselves. Life is not about not making mistakes. It's about accepting your mistakes, accepting your faults, to be able to handle them better over time, and to tone them down if that's what you want to do. And certain things you've done you may never want to do again. And to steer clear of those activities that didn't work for you, you'll have to find suitable distractions for your life that, that are productive not an equally destructive activity. You'll want to really find some way, uh, something to do in that activity's stead, something to do instead. So go ahead, and if you haven't already, lay down couch or your bed and start to start to really breathe deeper into your diaphragm or if you're not familiar with diaphragm breathing try and really breathe deeply into your stomach and it usually gets the diaphragm moving this makes it so that you are uh, healthily stretching um, ligaments and muscles in your body, which at a nice slow rate will be re relaxing and stretching to prepare your body for sleep. So you'll want to breathe in deeply. Breathe out slowly. And while you're doing this, keep thinking about details of the issue in your life. Ways in which maybe you've been too hard on yourself or too hard on another person to realize that if you've been putting a large amount of energy into some activity to appreciate that to not throw it away just because you may have not done as much as you expected to do and also to do the same for other people there are, um, there's a lot of activities that we expect too much of ourselves. And we have to be forgiving and accepting to our 
ourselves. If you want to have a healthy outlook on your own life and to be able to go on. What could you change about your perspective first? that would make the most positive change to the issue at hand. For me, it's oftentimes been a, a candorous apology. Honestly apologizing for something you feel bad for. As I said, we all make mistakes, and you want to realize those. And furthermore, if you do apologize, I have a firm plan to avoid repeating that mistake. You want to really assess that situation as best you can. When I'm doing self-hypnosis, I like to, some people think better when they speak aloud, so I basically talk to myself and say, uh, you know, uh, I've been more than fair in this situation. I don't have to uh, try any harder. It's up to them at this point. Or I could say something like, I have, I have been looking at this the wrong way. And I know that because of certain friends or associates' responses to what I've been doing. And focus quite critically on the actions that you have done and the actions that any other person in question involved in your issue has done. As they say, actions speak louder than words. We have a way of living out our fears and perspectives in action, whether we try to or not. So really paying attention to yourself and others, those actions can give you quite a lot of insight into what's going on with people, with yourself with, and with them. I'm doing just a little bit of uh, crinkling with this this bag I just found. I like it. I like a little bit of crinkle in my ASMR bits. Tinglerific. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the beats, uh, the um, tapping and crinkling to kind of a slow pace. So with your issue, as you're getting more and more relaxed in your state of lucidity, You don't, you probably don't know it right now, but your brain has been doing a lot of critical thinking in the last 15 minutes. I find that it's easier by far for people to ignore their 
their own motivations and fears and others motivations and fears in favor of emotional outbursts which emotional outbursts need to happen sometimes but if they do it's comforting to know that you're more grounded in a state of reason when you do it or when someone does it to you that they make sense that they try to be pragmatic about things too and fair there are many injustices in the world even on small scales between us and other people even without nukes see things rationally and reasonably and you have the patience to accept your mistakes and others and move on to whatever ends are necessary don't take people for granted we all are very, very powerful beings, and we can adapt at the drop of a hat. Humans are made to adapt. And in that same vein, sometimes things go wrong because of our amazing adaptation abilities. If we start convincing ourselves we let ourselves be convinced of a certain perspective. We can get stuck on that view whether or not it's ground in it has any correctness to it. Personally, rather be correct when I approach issues than off key and out of line. I like to have a sense of what's going on with people. They can also frustrate people your expressions and your the expressions you get from others we don't always mean to be uncharismatic and uninviting but life is hard it's very easy to forget to smile to say hello to say uh, goodbye or to simply remember a person's name there can be a great amount of offense taken by that it's important to appreciate people so that they know worthwhile. They have worth to you. And if they don't have worth to you, maybe you ought to get out of their way. Let them do what they're going to do. Unless they're hurting you, or someone you love, someone that is, doesn't, doesn't need to be hurt, you, uh, might want to stop that.
that's going on. I like this crinkle going on. I'm not sure how much it's coming through. It sounds great out here. Keep your critical, relaxed thoughts going. And be as honest with yourself as you can about the issue at hand that you've chosen. And if you've suddenly realized that you should be working on a different issue, then do so. And you can continue working at it on your leisure. There's no reason to keep working at something if you don't need to. And if you're staying on the same topic, all the more power to you. You've done very well at quickly finding what needs help in your life. And the fact that you know that may mean that you're intelligent person. And if you didn't find it, that's fine. With practice, they say. It's a matter of people being able to use their intelligence. Not that we don't have it. I'm going to keep making small noises here for a minute or two while you keep thinking about what's going on. If you need to talk aloud, go ahead. I'll be here. simulate the pace at which I think and breathe when I am hypnotizing myself.
been cleared. And if you decided to keep the solution, congratulate yourself. Good job. You can think about this. Simply while you're asleep because the last thing that you think about or do before you sleep is repeated in your mind as you sleep. See you next time.